When I was 10, I found my mother's diary. She described me as a peculiar child, given to whimsical fantasies. My imagination was ignited by solitary play, for I had no siblings or friends in Boston, save for my nanny and best friend Kate. It's time, Mabel. Kate stayed with us, even after father had put a pistol to his head, leaving us nothing but his gold watch. I loved this piece. Um, I thought the stop motion animation, the details, the texture, and the quality, uh, the, the quality of it overall was stunning. It really matched the gravity of the story. Um, a difficult story, a troubling time, um, and the juxtaposition between the nostalgia of the dolls and the the playing with dolls, um, the 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 beauty of the textures and the, the historical significance with the the harsh terrors of the past the horrors and atrocities to humankind was a really brilliant balance uh, juxtapositional balance throughout really great storytelling it was clear and poignant in the script and I really appreciated that animated title card as well thought it was effective to break it up but um, yeah, overall, I just thought it was deeply imaginative, but very much grounded in those very real feelings, which made the choice of the stop uh, stop motion animation that much more intriguing. Good narration of a tragic story uh, that's well written for this piece. The dollhouse figures had incorporated facials, computer generated so the mouths move without it ruining the forms of their faces and their little eyes were blinking as well. Wow. Uh, the set miniaturist really did an excellent job with the period piece costuming and the furniture pieces in the home. Fantastic. Uh, the sound effects even, wind outside and creaking floors of this older colonial mansion. It was just expertly done. Gets you right in the feels. It dives into slavery and the story of this little girl in these different times uh, that we uh, have once known to be living in. And it follows a little girl and how she feels that there is a ghost under her bed, only for us soon to realize that it's actually a slave's child in hiding, living underneath this girl's bed in this bedroom, the room once owned by a slave and then was removed from this space as the slave owner was often uh, inevitably known for selling his slaves babies right off the bat. She didn't want to lose this child, therefore she kept it a secret. And during this time, this little girl feeds this ghost, so to speak, uh, treats and gives toys and uh, eventually, you know, stands up for this girl and wants this little girl to stay despite what she looks like because she's so innocent and not knowing what's going on in the world in this heinous perspective that this master has and so you get to see this guilt that this character goes through for the rest of her life for the most part the injustice this child witnessed um growing up on this plantation even though she was caucasian still sympathizing with that of the slave motivated her life's purpose to reconnect with the slave girl who she felt guilty for mistakenly outing in her childhood, she felt and carried the burden of this child being separated from her mother, her mother dying from heartbreak shortly after, the hardships that she maybe had to endure for her entire life. And it isn't until she reconnects with the granddaughter that she is able to kind of put herself at peace. Uh, what she does do in a sense that her life 
becomes different because of what she witnessed based off her mother's choices is to choose to live in a different way. And I just thought that was a beautiful roundabout way that they put the story around how the, the things that we go through as children could definitely motivate us as adults. This is a terrifying, terrifying story turned, turned into a cute childish play. And then it was a, such a twist. They have adorable characters, um, beautiful costumes and settings. It is an amazingly adorable world. I love this stop motion technique so much. It is a fantastic story with such a nice ending. I loved it in general. I had a, the, great, the greatest time. I love stop motion animation. It's a lost art form. And I love to see that people are still trying to use it. I do wonder where the filmmaker found all these old antique dolls to make this film with. And then the minimal animation it took just to make their mouths move on a software probably was extraordinary work. And it definitely paid off. I'm definitely a doll fan. So this is one that made me wonder if these dolls were passed down from generation to generation. Because they definitely looked antique and it made this film so much better because it gave to that old period feeling of the Civil War era. The ceremony uses a quite charming whimsical animation and uh, narrative style to mask quite, quite, quite dark subject matter. Um, and the way that it uses the trappings of a classical ghost story to you know, shift from the supernatural into all to you know, real horror. I think it's genuinely quite moving, um, and it makes it all the more sad and haunting. I don't know. And you know, stop, stop motion is, is is no easy feat. So you can tell just how much work and how much care went into telling this you know, quite moving story, but on the record of you know, the demons are eyes. So I think it's very impressive to see 